What's going on, Collector? It's your boy, Adam Ra. Welcome to my channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, I was on a hiatus for a minute, mainly because uh, I had some stuff going on, you know. I had to take a break to see what was what, you know what I mean? But um, I'm back for the most part. Um, I did decide to come in and do a reading real quick. So um, I did make like me, I, I made um, some new cards, like some personal cards or whatever. I personalized me some cards. Um, I call it the triage deck. Basically it's uh, designed after the medical field in which you uh, triage uh, different things that people have gone through or whatever. And then you manifest them into cards and stuff like that, especially when it comes to like spill work and stuff like that mental emotional spiritual or even physical like uh you know spiritual warfare or warfare or whatever okay the first card is gonna be two the number two um next you got the unknown and you got two sine x square plus one i'll explain that later Next, we have Saturn energy here. We have, let's see here, um, the respiratory system. Next, we have around, had the word around. Next, we have Pythagorean theorem. Next, we have the 11th house. And you have the eighth house right here. Right. So, okay, so um, if I was to triage this, first thing that I would look at is the first one that came over. And first we had the number two, which represents the dyad, um, masculine and feminine energies. Um, not just masculine and feminine energies, but um, two things trying to occupy the same space, but also um, two things having enough respect for one another not to occupy a certain space but to kind of like revolve around each other almost like a wheel you know what i'm saying you got the good part of the wheel you got the undesired part of the wheel uh next we have the unknown on here well I, you know what i'm just gonna go straight down next we have saturn we have the energy of saturn on here and we have the pythagorean theorem um with the energy of saturn that gives me the, the uh energy uh, that gives me the vibe of uh life lessons or harsh limitations so there could be two people out here who are like a masculine and feminine energy and a dyad that is going through some kind of saturn uh nalia energy some kind of um i want to say like they're learning a lesson or um uh, karma has finally caught up with them and you have uh pythagorean theorem here got uh what is that a square plus b square equals c square has to do with triangle so definitely has to do with the uh, holy trinity here okay only the thing is that it's exponentiated and it's uh more it's empowered because eight because you you know the square root of anything basically empowers or doubles or whatever and nature or what it is so we're seeing doubles here and we're seeing doubles here so there's definitely some double um double digit limitation energy uh, double digit binding energy double digit um lessons to learn somebody is gonna have to learn uh twice as hard lessons than what they were learning before and it's coming from the most high guy right so next here we have the unknown respiratory in the 11th house here um with the unknown that's kind of that's pretty much uh self-explanatory or a matter of fact let me place a card on this one okay i already shuffled my cards and prayed over them and stuff so you got the um, unknown, the respiratory in the uh, 11th house here. So um, with the unknown, um, that gives me the vibe that um, basically what it suggests, like there's some unknown aspect that's heading our way or coming our way or some kind of um, something that we kind of like almost, it wouldn't be um, a tower. It would be more like just a circumstance that you don't foresee something that's uncontrolled and something heading your way because it could be positive or it can be negative so you can't say it's a tower okay and most people will say it's a tower and be like oh it's unexpected but in my no that's not the vibe off of this deck this is just something that you can't foresee and yeah my knuckles are ashy as hell so next we got the respiratory somebody could be having problems with the respiratory tract uh somebody could be having spell work uh 
sent or directed towards the respiratory system, like the lungs, um, the heart, mostly I would say like the lungs, uh, air circulation and um, blood flow and circulation and stuff like that. Also, we have the 11th house. So basically the vibe that I get here is that um, there could possibly be some kind of unknown um, respiratory situation going on or it's kind of like with the 11th house you get i get the vibe of like that has to do with like friendships and stuff like that so there could be somebody who's releasing like drawing in and releasing certain people and stuff like that you know what i'm saying like um basically when you respirate you it's, the respiratory tract it reminds you of how the universe works okay it collapses and it expands so somebody could be uh getting rid of people out of the circle or they could be expanding their circle in some way shape or form in an unknown way next we have two x two sine x squared plus one we have a round and we have the eight house two sine x squared plus one is a sine wave that has to do with the energy frequency could also uh has to do with um the heart monitor like a heart monitor you know how heart monitors work, you know, like all beep, 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 and all of that good stuff. So, um, you also have a round and you have eighth, eighth house energy. So basically with this um, two sine x squared plus one, it gives me the vibe of some kind of high energy or high frequency vibration that is around you. And it's circulating your, um, I want to say the, um, how the, uh, the eighth house has to do with like death your deeds and stuff like that so it ties into um that karmic cycle or whatever or that karma remember that i was talking about so it has to do with inheritance and stuff like of that nature and stuff that you inherit in this lifetime so yeah somebody is surrounded by some kind of high frequency energy that is around them that they probably cannot escape okay and i'm gonna put a smacker card on there okay so with this duality card, I mean, with this uh, row here involving duality, matter of fact, um, let me move these out the way for a second because there was other connections that I wanted to make. Um, just gonna kind of slide these back. Okay, with this, uh, now let's see here. Yeah, so basically, you know, you got on the bottom row, you have the Pythagorean theorem, the 11th house, and you have the 8th house. So somebody could be dealing with some kind of something karmic, like karmic friends. Um, the guy probably is warning someone about karmic friends, karmic family members, karmic associates. And it may be time for the Saturn energy to kick in and you respirate the uh, and, and keep in mind the people around you, respirate around you. So basically what I'm saying here is that with Saturn energy, Saturn uh, takes on the vibe of lessons, harsh lessons that we have to learn in this lifetime. However, uh, like limitations and lessons, it's not all bad because it gives off the vibe that um, basically it's kind of like the test before you get rewarded. Okay. So someone or, you know, someone could be going through a test to see how well they respirate, how well they hold on to things and release things, about grasping and releasing it, you know. And you know, to be honest, that's all about root chakra work right there. It's all root chakra in a sense, if you ask me, because um, we have a tendency to wanna to hold on to things that um, no longer serve us, but we also need to learn how to let certain things go, you know. You also have to be aware of the energies that surround you, so whatever energy you are around or surrounded by, you should definitely be careful. And um, yeah, I'm sorry, I just got this uh, weird vibe. I just got this weird vibe. I heard some I shouldn't have heard. Mm. Oh yeah, anyway. Like I said before, you got uh, the number two, you got the unknown up here, and you got two x, two sine x squared plus one, right? So basically, like I said, when I was talking about the dyad or whatever like that, um, the dyad has to do about masculine and feminine energy, active and inactive energies, 
um, the receptive and the creative energies combined and blended together, right? That's what number two is, stands for. Two is the number of union. It's a number of building things. It's a number of being decisive. I mean, you know, sometimes indecisive, but it has to do, it's surrounded around the energy of decisions, okay? With the unknown here, you got two and you got the unknown energy here. This unknown is definitely an unknowable, kind of like a question mark. So there could be some kind of energy surrounding around two people, like I was suggesting earlier. And this is a high vibrational energy here, okay? This is an energy, actually it's an energy, high, high vibrational energy shift. That's why you have that plus one on the end. It's a shifting of energies here. So somewhere, somewhere, some kind of way, there's some energies that is uh, shifting around certain people that is um, a very high for high vibrational, high frequency, high vibrational, okay? Um, yeah, so with that being said, I'm going to um, do the overall um, message of each pile. So this pile right here has to do with the Ten of Cups here. So this has to do with emotional, um, yeah, it has to do with uh, family, emotional f fulfillment. This is being happy with another person here. So it looks like somebody, two people, it looks like some people are being guided together. Two people are going to be guided together. But like two people went through two uh, very separate, but very strong Saturn energies here. And as a result, there's some uh, divine protection around these two people who had to go through this very strong or strict Saturn energy. This could be like a twin flame uh, reconnection. This could be a high level soulmate reconnection. Or, you know, if you believe in those two things, but the vibe that I get here is that it's two lovers that have been through like the word, like the thick of a lot of things. It's like they've been through a lot and now they're coming together to form a family. That's the vibe that I get here with that. Got two people out here forming a family here. Um, the unknown, the respiratory, and the 11th house. The unknown, the respiratory, and the 11th house. That right there is going to guide someone towards learning how to be a high priestess by learning how to uh, hold on to certain people and releasing certain things. Because the thing is, is that basically the people who are around us help define who we are as a person. Okay? And the things that we have to do to keep those people around us is the price that we pay to keep those people, okay? So knowing when to hold on to people and when to let people go is a very important thing. That is what define us, okay? Um, sometimes we outgrow people. Sometimes we need room for more important people to come into our lives to help mold and shape us. Like the same friends that you had in elementary aren't the same friends that you had in high school in many cases, okay? And the reason being is that as you grow forward, everyone's life change. Events, life change, event, life changing events happen. That's what the high priestess is out here for, to encourage you or to remind you that you have to learn how to embrace the unknown. You have to be comf you have to be confident in walking into a circumstance or situation without knowing all the details and still learning how to know, still know how what and who to hold on to and who to let go. Okay, so, you know, basically that's what this triage deck helps with. It's kind of like, like if you basically it's encouraging you to do triage with your, um, with your friends or whatever, where it's like you pay attention to what they cultivate in their life. And that's the thing that they try to influence you to do with your life in a sense, because they have a tendency to live what they, you know, they have a tendency to live it in a sense, or you watch and pay attention to what they live and what they do. And that'll let you know what you are inviting into your life. If you are surrounded by someone who is a liar all the time, you're inviting deception into your life. If you are surrounded by someone who is like, um, cunning and conniving, you're inviting evil into your life. If you're around someone who um, always speak their truth or is always honest, you're inviting sincerity into your life. You see what I'm saying? The people that are around you is the, are the are people are like doorways and portals. Okay. So who you are around matters. And that right there lets you know what doorways and portals you are opening into your life. Okay? 
last but not least on this one here, we have the Queen of Wands energy here. So yeah, this is definitely um, high vibrational, high energy. Um, this has to do with spiritual work in a sense, okay? So definitely just give me the vibe of, um, well, maybe not spiritual work, but this is somebody who has this very strong, like magnetic personality or someone who is very magnetic, someone who like can walk into a room and get everybody attention. This is a beautiful person, someone, it could be a beautiful, you know, it could be a handsome man, it could be a beautiful woman. However, this is someone that is very confident. They understand the concept of take of how action works. They are charismatic. They know how to apply and use action or they know how to use or apply their warmth to draw people into them, okay? Because the thing is, is that the queen chases no one but everyone pursues the queen, okay? Everyone pursues a true queen. That's why you have a lot of people out here who wants to call themselves queens, but and in reality, they do different things to make you chase them. Like, can you still call yourself a queen if you are subjecting yourself to being a promiscuous person to keep people around you? Is that really what queensmanship is about? Absolutely not. You should be able to just genuinely be yourself. You shouldn't have to um, be promiscuous or be this person who has to broadcast their sexuality in a sense to draw people in, to tease them in order to say that you have some kind of power or authority. When it comes to power and authority, the power and authority is given from the heart is the strongest power and authority there is. Power and authority out of fear or uh, control it's strong, but it doesn't last long. It has its limits because when it comes to power, with power, you ride, it rises, it rests, it, it, it can be detrimented and it falls. You're not going to, it's power is on a wheel. Okay. It's on a wheel. So that's why you have, um, that's why, you know, I was, you know, I guess let's drive back home. Anyway, so you have this uh, 2x, I mean, 2 sign x squared plus 1. So, yeah, this is definitely a high vibrational uh, sine wave. This is somebody who is very, very powerful. Uh, it's like you can almost feel this person when they're around you. You can feel their energy. This could also be um, the concept of a woman who uses, who is uh, very spiritual or has this very strong aura or has like some kind of high energy around her that is being under judgment in a sense because you have the eighth house here it looks like the deeds um her inheritances um this is the um house of the dead in a sense almost the things that she's done in her uh past life and stuff is coming into judgment here okay so that is the first 20 minutes next let's pull a few cards about this and see what goes on right so with the first card with the number two let's see what comes up for number two and yeah my hands are ashy okay so yeah like i said um remember i was talking about how you had this ten of cups out here and these two people are coming together when these two people come together they weren't designed they're not here like whatever it is it's going to be it's going to take a burden off someone okay or both of them because remember we had that saturn energy here right so yeah, like before when they were apart, it was really burdensome, it was hard, it was rough, it was a lot of hard work, but you know, eventually what happened was they ended up surviving and thriving or making it. So this is what kind of energy is out here. Yeah, you have the woman holding a heart. So yeah, there was a lot of releasing things. It looked like even someone was considering being cold hearted and letting and giving up on love in a sense here. That's the vibe that I get, a woman holding a heart. Or it could be somebody from the past that was holding on to someone that didn't belong to them. You know what I'm saying? And now that now that person is being forced to release this. Now that I think about it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It looked like this person is made someone is being forced to release someone. And that's why the Saturn energy to, to the Dyad and the Pythagorean theorem are out here. Because it gives the vibe of um it gives the vibe of like um, releasing a burden. The person who's holding on to these people or this person, they definitely were burdening themselves here, but they were doing it to, I guess, maybe for clout or because they wanted 
other people to it, was, it had something to do with other people whatever it was or you know whatever reason and reasoning behind it it had to do with other people it had to do with the way people perceived them or the way that they wanted to be perceived by people here okay so any either way um those very people that they were trying to impress or whatever they are also like uh seeing this person go through this um this pythagorean theorem you know basically with the pythagorean theorem that right there is a triangle so when there's a triangle around you you're surrounded on three sides by god the father god the son and god the holy spirit okay and that's what's going on here that's why you have the pyramid here as well because the pyramid you know even though it's four uh actually five points you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is the triad from the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, when you add that with the Hierophant card here, you have each corner represents an element, earth, air, fire, and water, and then above the Aether, which is truth. People's eyes are going to be awakening to the truth of this circumstance situation and everything that was going on behind the scenes that was being hidden, okay? Next, with this, we have the uh, unknown, the respiratory track and the 11th house remember i was talking about um holding and releasing things and letting things go well let's see what energy comes up for the high priestess yeah you have the lover's car in reverse so like i was saying it's time to release a lover here somebody that somebody could be in a, a relationship with someone that loves them i mean that may where it's kind of like they may love like one person loves one the other person more than the other person basically like the dad loves the mom more than the mom loves the dad or vice versa you know what i'm saying this is giving me the vibe of def this is give definitely giving me the vibe of um a divorce release uh breakup and give me the vibe of um yeah definitely a vibe the vibe of a breakup or uh some kind of uh release or separation of ways here because this could also be like friends and stuff because they say when it comes to um love love is a single soul inhabiting two bodies but also friendship is a single soul inhabiting two bodies so this could be uh some friends or this could be lovers that are separating and going their own separate ways someone is um excel as uh exhaling releasing letting go right yeah and you got the king of wands out here so yeah this person could definitely i i wasn't gonna read signs here but this dead person definitely this person could definitely be like a um a fire sign but either way this is someone who's a pioneer a leader this is somebody who is uh choosing to end a connection that no longer serves them and it's whoever this is they make good sound decisions they know what is the importance of making certain moves at the right time. Okay, this isn't somebody who's impulsive like the Knight of Wands. This is giving the vibe of somebody who's calculated, who understands how powerful. Sorry about that, I heard another noise. But this person understands how powerful action and bold action at that, how powerful it can be. So this person is a little bit more reserved, a little bit more patient, a little more learned. This is someone who, um, when they make a move, although they are not the Knight of Pentacles or the King of Pentacles, where they examine everything out, they take, they still have this, they have this way of flowing into their actions. You know what I'm saying? They have this way. It's almost like an art, like a mosaic in which each broken piece of glass lead into one another. And that's how this person um, acts. And this is how this person carries himself. Right? Next, let's see what kind of energy is out here for this. Rest and rejuvenation. Yes, this person is tired. This person was beaten, bruised. They were in a situ circumstance situation that just did not serve them at all. Now, in respiration and release, they are finding rest and rejuvenation. This could be you. This could be someone else. But it's a good thing to find rest and rejuvenation. To the best of your ability okay last we have this um queen of wands out here again right remember i told you about the high vibrational uh energy that's around you surrounding like uh this this uh your deeds and actions and stuff like that 
Okay, so let's see what kind of vibe that we can get from this or what's coming on with this. Right here, we have the Four Swords in Reverse right here, right? So basically with the Four Swords in Reverse, this gives me the vibe of someone who is um, not resting well at night, someone who's staying up at night. So there, it, it definitely could be the uh, the energy of death lingering around someone or karma or someone dished something out that is coming back to them and it's keeping them up at night. This is someone who isn't resting well. This is someone who isn't thinking well. This is someone who eventually or essentially they will be in the realm of the shaman. And the realm of the shaman, there's it's the realm of the shaman is basically exhaustion. Because you taxed your body, you push your body to the limits so far that the only thing left is your spirit, right? So the, someone here is overexerting themselves and they definitely need rest and rejuvenation. Someone needs to learn from this group over here in which it's time to go dig into yourself and rest and rejuvenate yourself. Let's see what else we got on here. Yeah, you got the hanging woman in reverse here. So yeah, this is definitely give me the vibe of someone who is getting a, a gathering new perspective on life. It's kind of like the things that they've done in life, they may not be proud of it, but they are still learning from what they've done based off the deeds and the um, energy that's coming back to it, back to them. It's kind of like someone fell upon their own sword or their bow has broken in battle. So something backfired here and on someone. And it's a high energy backfire too. It's not like no low vibrational backfire. This is a high vibrational backfire here. With this high vibrational backfire, it puts someone else in check. It may, this person can't sleep, they can't rest anymore. And not only that, it's like they're getting perspective on who or what they were dealing with or what caused this. So you know how, like almost like being in a mental prison or being locked up, because what happens is most of the time when, like when you get locked up, everything goes in phases. The first phase is you just being like, you know, in shock, you know what I'm saying? Or you have being like hopeful and scared and stuff like that. And then the next phase is uh, acceptance. And then after you accept it, you start thinking about what you've done. So you might go through an angry phase. And then lad, next, you'll start thinking about how you could get away with it or how what you should have did and how you get away with it. And then, you know, so on and so on forth until you get to the point where you just accept everything for what it is. And so this person is in this mental prison of where they are going through these phases here, right? They're up late at night thinking about what they should have done, what they could have done, where, where they went wrong and what they should have did differently, that kind of thing. Either way, we have indecision. Look, we got the indecision um, card in reverse. So yeah, this person has has made a decision. It's like maybe what was keeping them up is that they have to make a decision, or you know they were indecisive, or there's something coming up in which a decision has to be made. And basically, the vibe that I get from that is that the decision is getting ready to be made, or it has already been made, and this person is already lamenting what is what's going on and how everything is going to turn out. So now that I did it that way, I have to clear the energy. Ugh. Oh, this might be a long reading because of how the way this works out, right? Okay. So we read them that way and now let's read them the other way, okay? Now, the other way to read it is this way. It's basically almost like um, it, we got a, the four element, the elemental way, or we can do the um, Star David way, I believe. And yeah, I created this on my own. So if you see anybody else using this thing, you know where it came from, where it originated from. Okay, so um, basically what I'm going to do is... Um, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the, um, I'm not going to do the elemental way. I think I'm just going to do the, uh, star David way. I think that would be the best way to do this right here. 
So the star David is gonna be bam bam bam. Bam bam bam. Okay. So basically you have well you know what? I might as well connect it. Do the elemental way. Cause I got nine instead of six. Okay, so with the elemental way, you got um the four corners of the earth, right? So this right here is gonna be my uh, north. I mean, this is gonna be my east. This is gonna be my north. This is gonna be my west, and then it's gonna be my south. So in the east, what is rising up, what is coming to be, is the Saturn energy that's marked by the um, element of Cancer. This is something that someone can feel coming towards them. Uh, in the east, yeah, the eastern energy has to do with. Um, wait, wait, wait. Is the east? Is the east? Uh, cancer no the east is aries energy yeah so basically what's coming up in the east is this uh aries energy here in which um dang how did it how did that work You know what? I'm going to go with my first mind, okay? This right here is going to be my uh, Cancer, which is uh, Saturn, right? So basically, with this being Saturn, this is giving me the vibe of, um, like, with the Cancer energy, this gives me the vibe of someone feeling something coming their way, or they know that some kind of limitation or some kind of tower is heading their way. They can feel it intuitively, but they don't know what it is. Why? Because we have the unknown in the north. In the north, what we have here in the unknown is the Aries energy. This has to do with the self, and it has to do with the first house and the self, okay? So this right here, Cancer in the east, this has to do with the fourth house, which has to do with maternal, mother, and home environment, right? So definitely there's there could be a whole family or a home that's getting ready to be hit with some kind of Saturn energy. And it's an unknown energy here. So this, you know, those two combined could definitely be like a tower in a sense, okay? Now, not only that, in the West, we have um, the around energy. So it could be happening around them. But uh, the vibe that I get is that, um, let's see, Aries, opposite of Cancer is what? Aries, Tori. I want to say, well, Gemini isn't the opposite of Cancer. What's the opposite of the fourth house? Let's see. That'd be like the 11th house, and that will have to be like, um, first, hold on, let's see. Aries. No, one, two. Two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, man. Okay, either way, um, the energy that is directly across from uh, Cancer will have to be like, um, um, let's see, what's across from Leo? Wait a minute. Aquarius energy. That's what it is. Across from Cancer is Aquarius here. So you got Aries, you got Cancer, you got Aquarius. And then you have, I think, um, no, opposite of Aries is Libra. The opposite, yeah, Aries, Libra. Now it's gotta be an earth, oh, earth sign. It's gotta be like Virgo. Or it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be like uh, Capricorn. There we go. Aquarius, it's got to be Capricorn. The opposite of Cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I figure all that out. Okay, so, yeah, we got this unknown coming. Uh, it has to do with the first house, possibly. And then after that, what is uh, the opposite of the Cancer is uh, the Capricorn energy or whatever. That's basically uh, has to do with like, um, I want to say it has to do with uh, responsibilities and stuff like that. So if you got cancer, and remember we kept seeing those two, right? That number two, we have Saturn, 
and we have Capricorn over here in this cardinal direction right here, which is the West. So with Capricorn in the West, that gives me the vibe of like, man, this is gonna drive me crazy if I don't get it right. So let's see. No, not Pisces, but Capricorn. Yeah, that's right, Capricorn. Yeah, that's right. Shit. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I'm still perfecting it or whatever. So anyway, you got Capricorn here, right? So yeah, you got that Saturn energy here. Saturn is governed by um, which what would be Capricorn right here. And this Capricorn energy is all around this person. Remember I was telling you about how you had the Pythagorean theorem down here? And it has to do with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Basically, uh, it tells you how to get the length of triangles, the length of the legs of triangles, right? By being squared, that gives me the vibe of high energy or high frequency or high vibrational. So whoever this is, it's kind of like they, whoever this is, they aren't going to be able to get out of whatever is, you know, going on around them. Okay. So not only that, but you have the 11th house here, and it could also be brought on by somebody in their friend, you know, friend circle who could bring this about or who could initiate or bring this kind of drama or trouble in. Down here, the uh, energy is of a Libra, okay? This is definitely um, the cardinal point of Libra here, um, directly across from Aries, okay? So with that being said, uh, it could be a Libra, but it could not also be not be a Libra. But like it ties up with this 11th house because the vibe that I get is that most of the time, if you know Libras like I know Libra, most of the time Libras are like social butterflies. Most of them are, you know what I'm saying? And they have this tendency or knack to be the life of the party, draw people in, be around a lot of people and stuff like that, right? Okay. But all at the end of the day, we got, that's with that respiratory energy, like overall, you know, you got that respiratory energy, right? Knowing who to hold on to and who to let go of. And that's what part of this, uh, this cycle for this person is going to be about cutting through lies, basically, you know, cutting through deception and lies. And this has to do with the friend circle. Okay, so the next four elements is going to be, um, we got air element up here too. So somebody could be indecisive about something. This, this give me the vibe of uh, a decision having to be made. Yeah, we just saw that, right, in that other, in that other card, right? A decision having to be made and um, maybe somebody can't decide something or maybe there's two good candidates for something or you know, the number two, because it resonates with a lot of different things, right? So across from, like, let me see, boom. So across from air, let's see, this will be earth. This will be air. Ooh. No, this should be fire, air water wait dang it earth air fire and water that's how it's to do earth air fire water and yeah it kind of, for me it matters so i don't know about you but yeah so anyway yeah you got uh basically um two has to do about decisions almost giving the vibe of like the two of swords energy right so next we have the, um, what coordinates with that is the fire element here. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of high energy here, high frequency energy surrounded around this decision that has to be made, whatever it may be. It's, it's like giving the vibe of somebody being anxious, somebody being um, hyper, like basically hyper, or it's kind of like somebody is like panicky paranoia 
you know, that kind of vibe. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Like when, when you have like a lot of energy for something or you just like, you know, almost like being overly caffeinated in a sense, right? Okay. Next we have uh, the eighth house, which is coordinated with um, earth, no water. Okay. Yeah, because water grounds out earth. I mean, fire and fire is balanced by water. So yeah, the water, eighth house, that has to do with deeds. Somebody is definitely here for judgment based off their experiences because what happens is that when it comes to, to water, water has to do with experience because um, it has to do with experience. And the best way to remember that is kind of like if you were, if you had to mark everything in the world, like the like wisdom in itself, if you had to mark it by elements, wisdom that comes from doing things or experience has to do with water because you know you wasn't taught the formal way to do something you just know to do it a certain kind of way almost like a backyard mechanic you know what i'm saying so whoever this is it's like somebody is facing some kind of karma or some kind of deed it has to do with their inheritance or deeds or it has to do with possibly even their past life some kind of experiences that they have with their past life uh, the deeds in this life and what they've done with their life in this lifetime Next we have the uh, earth element. So yeah on earth It looks like someone is bound or there's some kind of binding action here. It looks like the most high God um, the divine intervention uh, Kicked in and is binding someone someone is caught between God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit um, for those of you who don't believe in Christianity uh, Israel you know, Isis, Ra, and El, the Elohim. Um, for those of you who, um, I guess, don't even believe in that, the sun, the moon, and the stars, the star. Because, you know, God is the sun. Um, the Holy Spirit is the moon, in a sense. And I guess Jesus Christ would be like the star. Because remember when, you know, Lucifer was cast out of, you know, out of uh, heaven. When he was cast out of heaven, uh, I think they said he was the son of the morning, which coordinates him with the, uh, the, the um, planet Venus, right? Um, a lot of, uh, I guess, Eastern stars and um, a lot of... Um, Let's see, a lot of Eastern stars and a lot of uh, Masons know about that, though. And the concept of the number 40, which I'm not going to get into because that's not important. But you have the Pythagorean theorem here, and that's definitely some kind of binding action. That's a grand trine here. So somebody could be a grand trine or somebody could have a grand trine binding against them. This is very high level magic here. This isn't something small. This isn't something where it's kind of like, you know, you can just, you know do this is something that takes a ceremony rituals you know what i'm saying preparations and stuff like that you know what i mean but either way it all boils down to respiration okay um i guess based off the decision that someone makes is going to decide what happens in this binding circumstance situation here now with that being said i'm gonna do the uh final four corner um yeah i'm gonna pull for the four corners this is gonna be my, um, I didn't pull for that last one, but I'm gonna pull for this one here. This one, and yeah, I'm actually a shit. <laughs> I guess that shit ain't changed, huh? And then I'll just go overall energy, All right? So basically with the uh, air, what's going on with the air? Remember I told you it was two people it was it has to do with uh indecisive or collection this right here i just looked at this card but this is the bone collector everything that we have originates from the bones that's the true magic of the universe that's where all things originate right from the bone that's how well at least everything goes down to the bone right whatever is in the bone manifests itself outwardly into the um the skin the bone collector it's the collector of like um, structure, frames and things of that nature. So basically what I'm saying here is that this person here has to go, has to decide something. And whatever they have to decide will decide on what their fate is going to be. Because we use bones to 
do to uh, divine and to regulate or to, uh, you know what I'm saying? We use bones for a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Because essentially what's inside of a bone is what makes, I basically, whatever is inside of the bone is what the rest of the body becomes in some circumstances and senses, right? So whew, that was a lot of talking. So yeah, so uh, yeah, you definitely got somebody out here who um, has maybe they, there's two paths available to them or there's two different routes they can take. One could be of like, you see how you got the antlers here and stuff like that. That could be like the deer path and then the one up here. I don't even know, that's like, yeah. Maybe they have to decide between their head and their heart or you know what I'm saying? Or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause this right here, this look like a little sacral plate, like a, like a sacrum. That's sort of remind me of the pelvis. You know what I'm saying? So maybe someone has to be enlighten themselves about following what their lower half and their higher half. You know what I'm saying? So next in the fire realm, the high vibrational fire realm, you got goblins out here. So that definitely give me the vibration of high vibrational goblins out here, or someone out here is um, using dark entities or uh, is being robbed of something, or there's some high energy, um, like spiritual things going on. The number five give me the vibe of like conflict. So yeah, there's just some high vibrational conflict that is uh, going on here. And that is coming from the uh, fire sector. <clears throat> so, um, Let's see what we have in the water sector. And the water sector, let's see, the goblins, yeah. So with the water sector, you have wizard of awareness, right? So you're someone is being guided to trust their intuition when it comes to the deeds and things that they've done. Basically, it's kind of like, you know you've done wrong and you know what I'm saying? You got this feeling that you did something wrong. You got this feeling that you something is missing. It's kind of like you're being brought to awareness of where you went wrong with certain things or the things that you've done wrong or the things that you did right or the deeds and stuff like that affiliated with your um with like the previous life and stuff like that like somebody could be even having a past life regression or dreaming about their past life um you know uh somebody could be re living something that happened from their past life but yeah there's a lot of past life energy here Yes, but this time someone is aware that they're going through this past life karma or this past life, whatever it's coming from their past life. So yeah, this and also you have the number three. The what is the tr three? Three has to do with um the um holy trinity again. You see what I'm saying? That holy trinity keeps coming out. Last but not least, you have air. So air, you got uh, peaks of joy. So yeah, whoever this is, they're definitely not gonna have a good time going through this um, this binding that was uh, over here, this Pythagorean theorem energy, this binding, cause it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like someone is bound. Basically, you see how you got three three here. Oh man, my my man, my hands are so ashy, so ashy. That's basically what the Pythagorean theorem represent. You know what I'm saying? Like you got um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You know, and basically you got the recurrence of the same number. So basically, a squared would be a times a. You see what I'm saying? And in certain sense, we have the number 33, which essentially would be three times three nine. That is uh, one of the which in, I mean, one that is one of the laws that sometimes things happen in nines. Okay, and remember I told you that the Holy Trinity was out here twice. That 33 is confirmation right there. Only the it could be three times because you got three up there and you got 33 down here. So it could be three different aspects. Because remember I told you with the Saturn energy back here, this back door or what's what's behind what's they're going through is Saturn energy. But over here was the cardinal point of Capricorn. So yeah. It's somebody is getting ready to experience major, 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 major karma. Okay, so the energy around here is envy. So this whole thing is to uh, reshape someone's uh, point of view about envy and about being envious of others. This is a lesson 
about envy and being envious of others and things of that nature. Wanting something that is not designed for you because in, a lot of times we want something that doesn't serve us, right? And that's why you have that respiratory energy here. It's time for somebody to let go or to respirate that envy out of them. You see? All right, that's the best that I have right now. Um, I love you guys. Um, no, no, no um, face to face right now. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know that um, I don't do personals. I don't do, um, you know, none of those readings, Patreon, none of that yet. When I do, I'll let you guys know. But until then, if you see somebody imitating or, you know, this spread, this is a spread I just came up with 10 minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? And I've improvised it all the way through. So if someone else uses this spread, you know where it originated from. Am I pressed about it? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not the kind of person to be like, oh, I was the first. No, I just want you to know if I keep using this spread, I don't want to hear anybody talking about, oh, well, you copied off of me, you know, because it's a long story. Either way, um, I love you guys. Um, I'll catch up with you guys later. And like I said, um, I'm going to be experimenting with quite a few different readings and a quite a few different um, spreads from this point on. So um, if you got a favorite spread, let me know. If it doesn't work or if it doesn't resonate, uh, take what resonate, leave what don't, basically. Okay. All right. Love y'all all. Peace.